Hi, I'm Bart Hansen, the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific Time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. Hey, Bart, it's Steven. How's it going, Steven? Good. Tooth doctor in Slack on the forum. Oh, nice. First time caller here. Seen you uh, pretty active on the forums. Yeah, I'm trying to learn. Uh, we'll, we'll see how this hand falls out. Okay. Uh, I have a hand from 2 5 last night in Columbus. Okay. This is a no limit hand? Yeah. Okay. The uh, the villain in the hand is 550 effective. Mm hmm. And we're sitting 1800. We've been running pretty hot the last couple orbits, so my image is pretty good right now. Okay. And it's a straddled pot on the button. Okay. So there's a villain one under the gun that's kind of a weak, passive middle aged woman. And I wanted to isolate her here. And this is kind of the first point where some of the people on Slack were saying I'm probably being a little bit too hopeful. Okay. But the blinds called ten dollars, ten dollars, and then she limps, and I decided to raise to forty five with king eight of clubs. Now where what position are you in? I'm low jack. All right. So straddle on the button so it goes in order. Uh two people limp in. She's the third limper, right? Correct. Uh and you make it how much from the low jack? Forty five. 45 but are, and the blinds are 5510 though 2510 in this hand right well the straddles on the button 10 and then it's 25 so right the, so uh, but but it's right, limp for 10 10 10 yeah i don't like this at all already right. first of all like with already three limpers in front of you 45 i i i almost never would raise to 45 at straight 510 with three limpers in front of me and to do it with the trash hand you know, I've talked about this in straddle pots. Like, you can over limp that hand. I, I very well might over limp that hand because people in straddle pots, they play way tighter and they're scared to put more money in the pot because the, it's double the stakes. So I think that that's a playable hand as an over limp. If you were going to ISO, though, I would make it much more. And the problem is, is that you're dealing with short stacks. So if you were to make it 60 and she called, now all of a sudden she's got four. 80 left and the pot's like 130 you've you've taken all your tools are gone for post flop for the most part she might just go with whatever she has on the flop you follow me right yeah and that's yeah. what most like master c was was telling me I, I went way too small and she's not even the main villain the main villain ends up being a bad leg who calls behind me mm -hmm. so i make it 45 and it folds to the button who's kind of a bad leg who i played with in plo and he's he's pretty spewy how, how deep is he He's he's the five fifty. Oh, he's, he's the on five fifty. Second buy-in. Okay, okay. Yeah, the buy-in here's a thousand, and okay. he's on his second buy-in okay. halfway through it already. Okay. And then the sm the straddle folds, small blind calls, and the under the gun limper calls. So now we're four ways to flop, and I have a trash hand. So you're four ways to the flop, and the pot's about one ninety something like that. Yeah, one ninety two hundred something like that. Okay. So the flop comes out ten of clubs, nine of clubs. Two of hearts. Ten of clubs, nine of clubs, two of hearts. So you flop a flush draw. Mm. Right. Okay. And it checks to me. So. Now this is this is where I think I made my first, mis second mistake. Yeah. <laughs> because I I decided with the bad leg behind me, he was going to bet pretty much 100% of his range here if mm -hmm. it checked him. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of stuck between do I want to try to bet and barrel and master c and a couple other guys in slack said it's a it's a perfect plot for barreling and that makes a ton of sense well here's the thing so i you know just really we'll just talk through this you say that the villain has 550 but i actually think that the other stack sizes are going to be pertinent to this too do you remember what the what the other limp callers had in terms of money yeah the small both of them had him covered because most people were playing between 700 and a thousand and i think the lady on the gun had probably around six or seven Okay, so you're not dealing with super deep stacks, though. I mean, probably like three pot size bets left. When you look at the type of ranges that people like will call or limp call with in certain scenarios, this tends to hit people's like pre flop range like pretty good. Like, if it was like seven deuce three with a couple clubs, I would love that way more than 10 nine deuce. I mean, you, you do have a flush draw, I understand that. But I, I, I don't hate checking here for a little bit of deception 
and if the button bets seeing sort of what goes on because if you bet and then you get jammed on you're probably going to have to call the button if you're getting two to one and then it's a little bit awkward with the other people too and i don't know how many full i mean there's a lot of people that play queen jacks and king jacks and king queens they're going to take off here or a 10 so i would probably check that's what i ended up doing okay so i check and and the leg on the button bets 80 he bets 80 okay and he bets like he just bets without thought you know it's almost like it checks him he just immediately grabs something off the top of the stack and throws it in okay like, and he always does that okay so I really don't put it. I, he could have any clubs, any pair, eight, seven. I mean, he, he's so wide here that I never thought about folding, but it folds back to me. I would, pro, I would uh, at this point, if you think he's like a bad lag, I don't mind just check raising him all in. Because at this point, he's got, what, 420 left. You bet 80 into 290, so if you call, it's 370. Or you could just raise to an amount that you think is going to get the maximum fold equity here. You could just make it like 300. It's different. I mean, even if he were to bet and then you get a couple of callers, that's that's also interesting because of the fact that you wouldn't think that they're all that strong by just calling. But in this particular scenario, if I do check a draw, the times that I'll check raise the flop with draws are exactly this scenario where I'm checking a draw because I feel like the board favors field callers range. But then I get into a scenario where I'm last to act on the flop. One guy bet. I'm last to act on the flop. Everybody folded. And if the guy is from late position or he's an idiot and could be betting anything, you just, I mean, I think that it's very profitable here to check raise all in if he's betting like a hand like jack nine and he's going to fold. You know, even if he has jack 10, you're almost flipping with that hand too. Uh, I mean, if he's betting any pair here, let's say maybe he bets ace-deuce because he puts you on ace-king and he's taking a stab at it. I think that from um, a guy who's a bad lag from late position, he's got a super wide flop betting range. And the combination of your equity in your hand and fold equity would make that a profitable play. That makes a lot more sense than what I did. So you I'm called? Just, I was thinking, if, yeah, I called and I thought, well, if I hit my hand, he's just going to keep barreling and trying to make me think he has clubs. But the um he's just so spewy i was like well i'll keep him on the hook and you know see where i get but the king the turn was the king of spades okay and so i think well queen jack gets there which is i mean his range is so wide i guess he can have queen jack and then now i'm thinking do, can i lead this or now i'm thinking i want to check jam so this was when i wanted to check jam the pot was about 360 so and he has 125. He's got 425 left. So he has about a pot size bet left, right? Right, right. And he bet so small on the flop. I thought if he, if I check and he bets like 150, I would just go in on the top for 500. Yeah. I, the only thing is, is that I don't think the king really actually helps you all that much if he bets. I, I think <laughs> that if I think he's either he either now has the best hand or he was just bluffing anyways. So let me, the stack sizes are very, very awkward, but let me just put this forth as a theory question to you, to doctor. I assume you're a dentist, mm -hmm. by the way, right? General dentist? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so if he has a value hand that he's betting that he's not going to fold because he bets big, right? Then you're losing. And if he has a bluff, then he's just going to fold. So what do you think the right play is here if he bets like 150 on the turn? Just calling? I think so. I think it's kind of in between. Just yeah. To keep his bluffs in, you mean? To keep his bluffs in or you're behind. Right. You know what I mean? So what happened? Well, you checked. Me, I checked and he checked it back. Okay, that's fine. Okay, good. And what, good. What that's confused good. me here was I thought he would continue with any, any 10, any king, certainly, and definitely queen jack. So I'm thinking in my head, well, he must have, maybe he's got clubs. Why would you think that he would continue with, if he had a hand like, say, ace-10 or jack-10, why do you think that he would continue to bet? I mean, I'm not saying that well, he's thinking well, about no, I, what I, you I, have. You're but... right, you're right. I'm figuring if if he has a 10, it's probably 10-9, jack-10, queen-10. Mm -hmm. And if he turns extra equity with the 10, he's just so, he, he's so bet-happy, I figured he wouldn't stop because the king came. Um, I mean... 
I don't know. I think that people misinterpret lag sometimes. When you check call there on the flop, a lot of times people are going to put you on ace-king or a hand like king-jack or king-queen or something like that. So if they had top pair and now they pick up a gutter and a king comes and it fits into what they think would help your hand, they're going to check back up. They're going to check back a lot. Okay. They're not going to just bet, bet queen jack though. I mean, he's, he's yeah. definitely yeah. betting the Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. for sure. So then he checks it back and the, I was thinking, okay, I'll bet small for value on the river, but then the river was 10 of diamonds. The river was the 10 of diamonds. Okay. Yep. And this is where I got confused because of my read on the turn was I thought, well, he, I don't think he has very many 10 because I thought he would have continued barreling the 10. No, yeah, I disagree. <laughs> I oh, mean, I, I think I think as no, I think as played here, this is a check evaluate. And I think yeah. you can be beat here a lot. I mean, the thing that it's very bad for you that you have clubs because that means that this guy has less chance that he has clubs. I mean, he's right. played it like he's now, had a 10. He also will check back a 9 and maybe even sometimes check back like king-queen or king-jack here. So I think the play is to check and probably check fold, but you're going to have to get a read in by his bet sizing and his mannerisms. Right. Um, does it help that the clubs I have is the king-8, and so I'm, I don't block any of the ace-x clubs? I mean, I was thinking he's got a ton of ace-x still. Well, I mean, you, you, mean you don't block ace-king because he would raise preflop? Well, no, I don't. I don't block like ace five of clubs, ace four of clubs. We well, block ace eight of clubs. Hello, <laughs> right? I block ace eight of clubs. And yeah, yeah. Clubs. But he three bets ace king. But um, I was thinking if I would have had if I would have ace, let's I had ace nine with eight, with ace of clubs, I'd be blocking a lot more of his bluffs. Uh, like it'd be a lot harder to call him on the river. If you had ace of ace of clubs, nine of clubs. Or if I had the ace of clubs, like it'd be a lot. He has a lot less clubs to be. Bluffing on the river. No, I I mean, no, it's bad that you have clubs in your hand because he can't have a king high flush draw. He can't have eight high. You, when you have two clubs in your hand, you drastically do, do, you you drastically cut out the combinations of, of flush draws that he can have. Doesn't matter what they are. Okay. So what what did you do? Well, I checked. Okay. And then he quickly he did his quick little bet and he bet one fifty. I think you're beat. I think you're beat here. I mean, the pot's 520. Um, I can't imagine that he's going to check back the turn and then bet the river as a bluff. You only beat ace-x of clubs for the most part. So 520, 150 to call. You're getting about 3.5 to 1. You have to be good 1 out of 4.5 times. But if he's playing a lot of hands, he's going to have so many 10s here. If he's playing queen right. ten, king ten, and ace ten offsuit, there are twelve. Uh, there are, are going to be eight combinations of each of those. So there's twenty four combinations of jack ten, queen ten, and ace ten. Those are hands that would bet the flop and check back the turn. So that's twenty four combos. And how many flush draws can he really miss? You, he would have to have as many as eight flush draws that he would always bluff at the end with. I, I just think you're beat, and I think that those size larger still with me yeah it makes sense yeah 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 Did you... i was like sitting at the table thinking for about a minute literally counting like how many flush draws i could give him but yeah. i didn't give him all those tens so my math was like oh this is totally a call <laughs> and i didn't give him any of those tens well i ended up calling and he had a really weird hand he had pocket threes that's odd he didn't even have clubs so I have, I mean, he's just crazy. But okay. the hand was interesting because I think you're right. I think it's probably a fold in a, you know, in a box. No, I think it's a check the raise on the flop, me. all in. That's that's well, what, that's what right. we're looking it's, for. It's a fold as played, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. So. So play it faster on the flop because he's because he's last act in his leg. He's going to be betting so much weaker stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Take advantage right there. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks for the call. Wait. All right. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA100. Click on the link right there.